technical assistance, provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud tech stack, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so let me know when you are able to see my screen. I just shared my desktop, so you should be able to see my desktop now. So we'll we'll be using chart window for uh, for the answers, uh, so that I can uh, quickly um, see that. So so let me know if you are able to see my desktop. So you can respond in the chart window if you are able to see. Okay, thank you. I see one response. So uh, let's make the class interactive. So I'll be asking questions uh, uh, questions in the middle so that you can respond in the chat window. So that will ensure that uh, the course is interactive. And uh, I also see that uh, people are uh, actually listening to the class. So that way we can we can make make the class more engaged and uh, interactive class. So let me open the course uh, content document which I have. So, so in case you don't have, you can drop a mail to training at H2K Infosys. Uh, training at H2K Infosys. They will be sharing this document with you. So let me open. Let me open the course document. So uh, before starting with the course, um, as I already introduced in the demo class. So my name is Meghnad. Uh, Meghnad. So I have around eight and a half years of IT industry experience and. Uh, I have been taking online uh, classes for the past four to six years, and I uh, have taken numerous trainings for uh, student and US students as well. So my key technical skills include HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL Server, C Sharp, ADO.NET, and ASP.NET. So, in case if you have any any doubts regarding the course content or anything related to duration or all the details, you can call you can just uh, call this number. Please make a note of this: seven seven zero triple seven one two six nine, or you can drop a mail to training at HTK Infosys team. So so keep keep note of these two uh, these two contact details. And uh, uh, coming back. The details about myself. So I work for companies like Accenture, uh, Cognizant, and uh, even I work for Infosys for four years. So I have been uh, very much passionate for conducting trainings. Uh, so so I'm here. Okay. So let's get started with the course. Uh, today we'll see how do we. Uh, today we'll see a simple uh, C sharp program, um, and we don't need any um, Visual Studio software for today. And after today's class, we might need uh, Visual Studio to be installed. Uh, okay. So, how about others? Uh, I see one uh, message uh, saying uh, from Sonal saying like she's not be able to hear me. Uh, how about others? You are able to hear me? You are able to hear my voice? Okay, I see response uh, like. You're able to hear. So one of the students uh, says she's not able to hear. So let me give me a, give me a minute. Just a second. I'm checking with one of the student who is not able to hear. So please wait for a minute. Okay. Okay. I told her uh, to join back uh, with the meeting. Okay. Um, so let's get started. So today we'll we'll uh, we'll see how to write a simple C# -sharp program using Notepad. We'll not be using any Visual Studio. So I'll be sending uh, the link for installing uh, Visual Studio after today's class. And uh, so we'll also see what is .NET Framework and uh, where we can see if .NET Framework is installed or not. And uh, what is the use of .NET Framework and what is Visual Studio? And uh, why we need to go for .NET instead of other technologies, and also we'll see what is .NET Framework Class Library, and uh, and what is CLR, CTF, MSIL, JIT Explosion. So all these things uh, we we are going to see some of the concepts today, and uh, some of the concepts we'll see tomorrow. So let's get started. So first thing, uh, what I want uh, to verify is let's verify whether we have .NET Framework installed in our computer or not. 
so dot dot framework uh, comes with your OS operating system so i hope all of you are having windows 7 or windows 8 or so anyone is having windows xp can you please ping me uh, what is the os you have what is the operating system you have um, just just i want to see uh, from all the attendees like uh, what is the operating system you are using so i got one response uh, windows 8 so i got couple of responses but look so please uh, ping me what windows which version windows 7 or windows 8 or windows xp or okay okay great uh, so i see all of you having uh, windows 7 or windows 8 so so i see all of you are having windows 7 or windows 8 uh, so that should do so now let's verify whether uh, let's verify whether we have uh, data framework installed or not. To verify that, all of you need to do uh, need to is uh, you need to go to my computer. So so I'll just tell the part where you need to verify. So you have to tell me whether so I I'm not seeing the response from few attendees. So so please uh, please respond to me uh, so that so that I'll understand that uh, you guys are also practicing what I'm saying. So so what I'm what I'm uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm I'm trying to see whether .NET Framework is installed or not. So remember, uh, there is a difference between Visual Studio and the .NET Framework. So both are not same. .NET Framework, which which comes with the operating system, uh, whereas Visual Studio is a software which is used for uh, working on .NET. So without using Visual Studio, also you can you can write C# -sharp programs and you can compile them. So today we are going to see how to do that without using Visual Studio. So so let me verify. So how let me verify whether we have .NET Framework installed or not. So .NET Framework. I'm asking about .NET Framework, not Visual Studio. So I need to go to C colon. Uh, I need to go to C colon and then I need to go to Windows folder and I need to verify in Microsoft.NET. Microsoft.NET. Inside that, I'll be seeing Framework and Framework port Framework 64. So if your computer is 64 bit, uh, you might need to look into this Framework 64. Otherwise, you might need to look into Framework. So can all of you verify whether you have .NET Framework uh, in this folder? What is the maximum number you have? So I have .NET Framework 4.0 installed in my computer. So can all of you verify in this part? C colon Windows Microsoft.NET Framework. Inside this, I want the response from all of you. Which is the latest folder you have? Whether do you have 3.0 or do you have 4.0? V4.0. What is the I mean, uh, so so you you need to ping me V4.0 if you have this folder V4.0. So yeah, I got one response. Uh, I need the response like V4.0 if you have this folder. I got three responses. So all of you, please go to this part. Uh, this is the part where where you can see that the .NET framework is installed or not. So the part is C colon Windows Microsoft .NET v4.0 under Framework 64. Yeah, that's great. So so you need to go to this part. C colon Windows Microsoft .NET Framework. So if someone asks you uh, whether can you please uh, see whether .NET Framework is installed or not, all you need to do is you need to go to this part. C colon Windows Microsoft .NET Framework, and the other way to do that is you can verify in programs and features installed programs. But anyway, let's uh, so for now. I'm sorry. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So the difference between framework and framework 64 folders is that um, so normally if you have 64 bit uh, Windows uh, operating system, so you you need to look into framework 64, and if you have normal 32 uh, bit operating system, you need to look into framework uh, framework folder. So so framework 64 is specifically uh, for 64 bit framework. Okay, so now I'm just I'm just going to Microsoft.NET Framework and version 4.0. So this one this one will work both in 32-bit as well as 64-bit. But if you go to version uh, like Framework 64 and version 4.0, that will only work in Framework 64. Okay. So now I have selected uh, Windows Microsoft.NET Framework and version 4.0. So now. 
anyone not having uh, anyone not having this virtual pro dot org can you please ping me like you don't have so i i see the response from all of you that pro dot org has been there so uh, that's great so now now what we will do is all of you please open command prompt windows r cmd i hope all of you know how to open command prompt so c colon uh, users uh, you can open command prompt and then just type csv so when you type csv csv is the compiler for c sharp programming so csv is the compiler for c sharp programming so can you please type csv and see whether what is the output you are getting i guess most of you will be getting uh, most of you will be getting the output as not recognize the command can you please try that and tell me what are you getting the same response like this or are you getting not recognize the command so the moment you type csv uh, for me i'm getting like uh, uh, yeah so i'm getting like visual c sharp compiler virtual pro dot org something like this but for you you will be getting as not recognized as internal and external command right so now if you want to make sure that can you please again go to this folder so go to this folder microsoft framework virtual pro dot org and inside this folder you will see something called um, you will see something called csv so so can you please uh, see whether you have this csv inside this folder so just type csv it will take you for that folder csv.exe or or csv so you will see the size of the file is 1069 so i repeat again so i repeat again just just a second So go to this folder, uh, C colon Windows Microsoft dot net framework virtual pro dot org, and then and then go to this folder, uh, verify that you have this file csv dot exe or not. So I'm sure all of you will be having this csv dot exe. So so what? Yeah, the size uh, can differ, but yeah. So if you have this csv dot exe, all you need to do is copy this part. So C colon Windows Microsoft dot net framework version four dot org. Copy this part. Uh, please listen to me, and then after that you can uh, you can try this. Copy this part, and then what you need to do is um, okay, yeah. So I'll 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 explain this again. So copy the part version four dot org. Copy this complete part. Right click and copy up to version four dot org. Version four dot org. So once you copy this, I'll repeat again. Don't worry if you're not able to follow uh, this step. I'll I'll repeat again. Copy the folder part, and then start. Right click on my computer. Right click on my computer, and then right click on my computer, and then properties. Go to advanced system settings. Advanced system settings, and then I repeat again. For now, please listen to me. environment variables and then if you go down little bit you will see something called parts you will see part here and click on edit at the end of this what you need to do is you need to paste it right click paste whatever the part you copy and then click on okay i repeat again don't do it now i repeat again please don't do it i i i'll explain three times so i'm going to explain second time now so copy the part where a uh, framework version 4.0 and just a second uh just a second one of the student is asking me question so so um so now i'm i'm repeating for the second time so yes uh, one of the one of the attendee says like uh, she's able to see only csv and not the exe so if you want to see the extensions if you want to see the extensions what you need to do is see um you have to go to organize by default you will not see the extensions so if you see here um for example so this is called file name and this is called after dot whatever you see this is called extension so this is the file name and this is the extension 
so now by default you will not be seeing the extension what you need to do is if you want to see the extension what you need to do is you need to go you need to click on organize and then go to folder and search options if you want to see the extensions of the files what you need to do is you need to go to organize folder and search options uh, maybe for windows 8 uh, you might not be able to see this option but for windows 7 people uh, they can do this if you if you want to see the extension so click on organize folder and search options and then go to view and you need to uncheck this option hide the extensions for known file type hide the extensions for known file type you need to uncheck this by default this will be checked for you so you need to uncheck this option the moment you uncheck this option and click on ok and then then you will be able to see the uh, see the extensions like csv.exe see now for example if i go here and uh, folder and search options if i go to view if i if i check this option now now i am checking this option if i check this option click on apply ok now i am not seeing the extension see here i am not seeing uh, i am not seeing csv i am only seeing csv for this so, so even though this is, uh, I'm seeing this as csv.exe, but this is not the csv.exe file. This is csv.exe.config file. So, if I want to see the extensions for all the files, what I need to do is I need to go to organize. I need to click on organize. I need to click on click on folder and search options, and I need to go to view, and I need to uncheck this option. I need to. I need to remove this option remove this uh, option so let me uncheck this option apply ok now I am seeing when I type csv here so when I type csv here I am able to see csv.exe which is application file ok so this is about uh, how to enable uh, seeing the extension for folders so let's again go back to the topic how do we add in application variables so today uh, it will be a bit confusing don't worry I'll make I'll ensure that uh, you are very clear with what we are discussing today so I'm going to tell again how to configure the path in environment variables so now go to this folder version 4.0 copy this path copy this path I'm just right click on this copy this path now go to start right click on my computer right click on my computer uh, and then right click on my computer and then properties Yes, I am recording today's class, uh, but we'll, uh, uh, yeah, I am recording today's class. Okay, so, um, just a second, uh, one of the students is uh, not able to hear me. So, for the first class, you might see this queries, uh, so please bear with me from the next class. Uh, so, Okay, uh, so if you don't have advanced system settings, uh, I guess you are using uh, you are using Windows 7, uh, Windows 8. So for those who are seeing Windows 8, I guess they might not see advanced system settings, but there is a way to do that. Uh, so, so for for them, what they can do is uh, what they can do is uh, I'll I'll tell one solution for them as for them as well. Okay, for Windows 7, you don't see this, is it? Okay, so. How about others? Are you able to see this? When you right click on my computer, so right click on this uh, computer and then properties. When you click on properties, are you seeing this advanced system settings? Advanced system. So those who are seeing this advanced system settings, click on advanced system settings. Okay, I'm, I got only one response, like they are able to see advanced system settings. How about others? Uh, they are able to see this advanced system settings option. Yeah, I got a response from Jesse. Uh, they are able to see that. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, only from couple of uh, students, I'm not. I'm getting uh, option like they are not able to see that. So don't worry if you're not able to see. Uh, I'll I'll tell other way as well. Uh, so now, just a second. Uh, one of the student is not able to. Uh, Just 
extra second uh, for today as i said please bear with me uh, a um, couple of students are having uh, not able to hear the audio is fine so so Okay, so one of the students is not able to hear the audio. So please bear me for today. Uh, tomorrow onwards, we'll see this uh, quarrel problem. So I don't want to uh, spend much time. Okay. So so now uh, so I'll again come back to this. So so I'm copying. Uh, I repeat again. I'm copying this folder. Right click on this copy. So and then again go to this. Right click on my computer. Properties. Click on advanced system setting. If you're not able to see advanced system settings, it's okay. Well, it's okay, no problem. So now, what you need to do is click on environment variables. Click on environment variables. So do it now. Uh, do it now along with me. Click on environment variables, and then you need to click little bit down, and you need to go to path. So you need to go to this path. So all of you done till here. Uh, all of you done till here. You need to click on path. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. So once you click on this path, uh, others who don't have uh, advanced system settings, it's okay. I'll tell a solution in a couple of minutes. So click on this path and click on edit. Click on edit, and then put a semicolon at the end. If you don't have semicolon at the end, put a semicolon at the end. I repeat again. Do not modify this anything. Uh, do not remove anything. It's here. Uh, so be careful. Be very careful. I'm repeating again. So, so click on advanced system settings, and then click on environment variables, and then go down a little bit in system variables and select. Click on path. Click on edit. You're not able to see my screen. Uh, so, uh, at least you're able to see my screen. Okay. Okay. So. Click on, click on edit and put a semicolon. See, I am having a semicolon here. If you don't have semicolon at the end, put a semicolon. Please add a semicolon, and then paste the path which you copied. So, paste the path which you copied. Okay. So. Okay. So put a semicolon at the end, and then. No, no, no. Uh, I think I think uh, you need to yeah so I repeat again so don't copy this one so what I'm saying is what I'm saying is uh, I'm not asking to paste in the chat window so what what is my question is uh, you need to click the path click on edit click on edit I already said uh, I already told you guys to copy the path uh, up to version 4.0 so you would have copied this path whatever you copy uh, so i said to copy whatever you copy uh, you all of you go to what uh, normal framework only instead of framework 64 you can go for framework only framework so uh, yeah i'll wait for questions give me a couple of minutes uh, so copy this copy this version 4.0 and whatever you copied you need to paste it after the semicolon here in the in this so right click on this you need to paste it and then click on semicolon. Okay, so so I repeat again. I repeat again. Go to this folder version 4.0. I'll be repeating this because this is very important step. Go to this folder C colon Windows Microsoft .NET Framework version 4.0. Copy this path. Copy this path and then and then paste it here after adding a semicolon with already existing one. Do not remove anything. Just add just click on just click on path click on edit 
add a semicolon at the last at the end and after the semicolon whatever you have copied the path paste it and then put a semicolon again so all of you are done with this step click on ok and click on ok click on ok and close the parent window so done with this step if you are done please tell me if it, it's done ok I see one response like it's done so how about others are you done with this step ok I'm waiting for others uh, I didn't get response from Jesse yeah ok so now what you need to do is now go to command prompt uh, so for those who are not done, uh, don't worry. Yeah, you need to uh, after you paste it, it's optional to keep the semicolon. Uh, but before pasting it, you have to keep semicolon, and after semicolon, you have to paste the path which you copied. Okay. So now go to command prompt, Windows R CMD, and then type CSC. Close your uh, already existing command prompt. Close your command prompt, and now type CSC. And for those who don't have, uh, who don't have uh, advanced system settings, what they need to do is they need to paste. Uh, they need to do this. So how about others? Uh, please tell me those who those who are done this step. When you type CSC, are you able to see like this? Are you able to see? Previously, you are getting uh, not recognized command. So now, what you are seeing? Yeah, no input specified. So, are you getting this line when you type CSE? Are you getting this line saying like VL C sharp compiler version 4.0? So this is what previously you would have seen like uh, you would have seen like uh, not recognized command. So now you are able to uh, you are able to see. So for kernel alone, who is uh, okay? So okay okay great so now uh, for those who are not able to see this okay good so anyone who is for whom still you are getting not recognized command can you please ping me who is getting not recognized command when you type csc please ping me if anyone is getting not recognized command when you type csc Okay, so I see one student who just joined. Uh, who just joined? The, uh, uh, no problem. Uh, for those who have missed today's class, uh, okay. So, just a second. One student has just joined. Okay, so just for a change, uh, what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll make one of you as presenters. Can you please explain what we have done? Uh, for those who missed it, um, okay, let me explain. Uh, I'll not do it now. So um, for those who missed it, uh, I'm going to explain again in 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 a minute. So. All you need to do is uh, you need to verify in three colon Windows Microsoft.NET Framework version 4.0 folder. So go to this folder, copy this part, right click on this, copy this part. Once you copy this, all you need to do is copy this part, I repeat again. So three colon Windows Microsoft.NET Framework version 4.0. So uh, from tomorrow, please be on time uh, for the class so that uh, I'll not uh, spend time for repeating. Uh, okay. So copy this part, and what you need to do is go to Start, right-click on my computer, Properties, and Advanced System Settings. Go to Advanced System Settings. Uh, right-click on my computer, Properties. Click on Advanced System Settings. Click on Environment Variables, and go to the uh, variable called path click on edit add a semicolon at the end add a semicolon at the end and then paste it paste the path which you copied click on ok click on ok 
so once you do that so once you do that for those who are not done uh, don't worry you can uh, for today's class uh, you might uh, you will get the recording so so now so now after adding that when i type csv it will it, it will be recognized so now what we will do is uh, we will try to write a simple c sharp program so we'll we'll, we'll just get started with a simple c sharp program so now windows r i'm opening notepad so please listen uh, even windows 7 uh, yeah windows 7 users also should be able to do it i'll tell you in a minute uh, so for those who are not able to see for those who are not able to see the advanced system settings please uh, i'll i'll just explain it again i'll just uh, tell the solution okay so now i'm going to write a simple c sharp program so using system remember c sharp is case sensitive c sharp is case sensitive so using system and I'm going to write a simple, very simple C sharp program. So class, hello, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type here public static void main. Remember in C sharp, in C sharp, M is okay, okay. So in C sharp, uh, in C sharp, M is capital letter. Okay, so now what you need to do is, so for those who just joined, uh, who missed the previous half an hour session, no problem. Uh, you can focus them now. Uh, so now, sorry. So now I'm writing public static void main. Don't worry, uh, what is public, what is static, what is void, and what, uh, what is void main. I'll explain this later. So I'm just writing a, a simple C structure of C sharp program. So using system class hello public static void main and to print here in C sharp we have to use console dot console dot right line. Okay, so so let me font let me reduce the font size so that uh, I can write it in a single line. I don't need to do, do it in multiple lines. So where is this? Uh, where is this flower backwards? Uh, in which? On which button we have? Can someone tell me? Where do we have this flower backwards? So we have adjacent to T, letter T. Adjacent to letter T on the keyboard, you see this flower backwards. Okay. So now. Okay. So now, uh, control that right line and control dot right line i'm adding this bracket and all i need to do is i need to write hello world so for those who know c language so how many of you know uh, how many of you can recollect your c programming H or how many of you know c programming you can ping me in the chat window so how many of you know c programming okay i got one response uh, how many of you know c programming normal c programming Okay, so I got a uh, couple of responses. Okay. So now let's try to recollect. Uh, no problem. So even if you don't know anything about programming, that's uh, that's fine. So so now what I will be doing is I'll write a simple C program and then we'll compare that with uh, C sharp program. So include include stdio dot h void main. And then, and then we have something called here printf hello world. Okay, so this is the simple structure of C sharp program, and C sharp is not object oriented; it is structured programming language. So we will not be having. I mean, uh, in C language, uh, C language is not object oriented programming. C sharp is object oriented programming language. So the code which I have written here at the below, this is actually C programming. And we will not see anything like class, object, anything like that in C language. So this is a header file. So why do I need to include this header file? Because my method printf, the method printf is actually present inside this header file. So that is the reason why I need to include uh, include stdio.h because printf method is actually present inside this header file stdio.h. So what is this print of hello world, hello world will do? This will print hello world on the on the console window. So similarly, similarly, similar to this, 
two program we have uh, I have written C sharp program here so this is a C sharp program so this first line is called uh, using system is something similar to include stdojo.h so there in C language we call it as header file we call it as header file in C sharp we call this as namespace so we call this as namespace so I'll type this so so this is a namespace system is a namespace so we don't call here as header files or packages in, in Java we call it as package here here in C sharp we call it as namespace we call this as namespace so system is a namespace which is which is having which is having console class so console is a class which is actually present inside system namespace and that is the reason why I have to write using system because I am using console class inside console class I have a method called write line write line is a method which is present inside console class so so I have to write console dot write line so now if someone asks you why I need to write this using system because cons so so yeah so if someone asks you why do you need to include why do you need to write this using system because uh, because your console is a class which is present inside the system namespace so what is a namespace namespace is collection of classes or it can be even collection of namespaces okay so if someone asks you again I'm repeating again so this is a simple structure of C program so using system uh, you need to include this because console is a class which is actually con so uh, if you're not speaking uh, please keep uh, yourself on mute okay so system is a namespace which is present inside console class and write line is a method which is present sorry system is a namespace which contains console class system is a namespace which contains console class so in order to use console class you have to include using system ok so where from where do we get this system so if you again go back to your dotnet folder so so which is which is v4.0 uh, version 4.0 if you again go back to this folder you will be able to see system so can all of you verify whether you have uh, you have system.dll or system in your version 4.0 so the easiest way to find is uh, start using type and then go to uh, verify whether you have system so go go to this so i have uh, i have it here system.dll i have it here yeah system.dll right so so this is the one which I am using here so when you install dotnet server these are all so this system.dll is the one which comes with dotnet framework so that is having your method that is having your class console class which is having right line method to print on the to print on it so these are all whatever you see here all the dls or or, or the files which you can refer which comes with dotnet framework okay so there are so many files see here i have so many dls these are all reusable components which you can use for your programming which comes with dotnet framework okay so so all of you are able to see the system.dll inside version 4.0 folder yeah that's great i see only one response all of you able to see this system.dll inside your version 4.0 okay so these are all these are all namespaces system dot drawing so imagine imagine you want to you want to do some drawing so you have to HQK emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. HQK emphasis how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, 
hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interview, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Institute has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinstitute.com.